guys, Matt here, back for more CompleteEffects.com for part two of the uh, faking slow motion video with a still image tutorial. So let's get started. So in the last tutorial, we cut this image up, split it up into all the necessary layers. So let me show you how I've set up my After Effects composition. We turn off this extra layers to not confuse anyone. I'm going to go from my active camera to my custom view one. And all I've done is lay the snowboarder out, as you can see in front of the background in 3D space. And I went ahead and added a uh, sort of in-between layer, so I have three layers of movement. And this is just a picture of some snowy trees. You could find a thousand of these online. And all I did was keyed this sky out so that... Uh, I had the transparency back there without having to cut behind all the trees. So if we look through my active camera in my comp, and I, if I move this camera side to side, you'll see that I definitely have some good shift between all three of the layers here. So let's get going. So my final idea with this comp is that what I want to do is I'm going to start with the snowboarder sort of launching into frame and I'm gonna render this whole thing out and then I'm gonna ramp the beginning of it so this first maybe eight seconds of it is gonna end up being compressed to about seven frames and it'll give us that full motion and then stop to slow motion look so let's get going first thing I need to do is all these different layers the legs the torso and the arm, we're going to concentrate on the snowboarder first, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn off all these background layers. And you can see I've already moved this anchor point on the arm so that when I rotate this arm, oops, so that when I rotate this arm, it's pivoting at the right point, but my torso is not set up that way. So I need to move this anchor point over. One way to do that is by pressing A and having anchor point come up on your layer but then you can see that moves your layer to your anchor point. So I'm going to use this little pan behind tool, grab this and change the pivot point of my torso to the center of this torso. I'm going to do the same for the legs, but I'm going to put the pivot right here where the legs meet the body. So now if I rotate these legs, I got a snowboarder with pivoting legs and I can now rotate his arm. So what we're going to do over time is just slowly rotate those things. But knowing that I'm going to ramp about the first seven seconds or so, there's no need to put any motion on the snowboarder as far as his body parts moving before that point. So for the torso, the legs, and the arm, I'm going to start my first keyframes here. Okay, so I'm going to put a rotation keyframe at about the seven second mark for the arms, the legs, and the torso. But what I want to do is I want to make the parent of the arms and the legs the torso. So I'm going to shift select both of those layers, pick whip, and the torso is now my parent. So if I move that around, everything else follows. So with my rotation points in the right place, I'm going to have my snowboarder come in in this initial position. And then when I get to the end, I'm just going to go ahead and rotate his legs forward a little bit. I actually may need a position keyframe on these as well to sort of keep them in the right place. So his legs are moving over time. And rotate the arm as well. So over time you can see his body has a little bit of motion. This arm's a little bit drastic so I'm going to pull it in initially and have it rotate out a little bit less toward the end. And then I'm going to go ahead and rotate the torso as well just a little bit so his body starts to tilt up. And it looks a little bit ridiculous but once everything gets playing this is going to look pretty good. So let's go ahead and turn our background back on. Our snowy layer. And now we got the base for our scene. We can see that nothing's happening until the 7 second mark, and then our snowboarder rotates. But we also need him to move. So before we do that, let's kind of get an idea about what the camera is going to do. We can see the edge of my layer here, so I don't want to start any closer than there. So at the very beginning of this shot, 
I'm going to put a keyframe for my point of interest and position. And I'm going to do the same thing for the end. I'm going to go ahead and pull that camera this way a little bit. So we can see over the course of the shot, there's our camera move. Now we just need to get our snowboarder to line up with that. So let's move him around a little bit. I'm going to grab the torso here, add a position keyframe at the very beginning, drag him back a little bit so he's coming off the corner of the screen. As the shot goes, let's go ahead and bring him forward here, and then extend that keyframe to the end. And it's just going to take a little bit of tweaking. We may find that he moves too much. It doesn't move enough. But that's starting to look pretty decent. Now one thing I will say about the still that we got out of this one at Wikipedia is that the background's blurred. And traditionally in this type of a thing, you know, if it was slow motion, the background isn't going to be blurred. It's going to be a nice, solid picture of trees, but... You know, that's the image I was able to find, so it's not a perfect scenario, but we're going to get the idea at the end, and in the end, it's not really going to matter that much. So, my shot's going to ramp from here to 7 seconds, boom, and then I'm going to go into slow motion from there, and I have, you can see the slow movement of our snowboarder. So, the only thing we want to do, well, there's many things we want to do, <laughs> but the first thing we want to do is, I'm going to add some snow trails coming off this snowboarder, so that... You know, we got a little bit of movement in our scene just besides this card of the snowboarder coming and kicking out. And the guys over at digitaljuice.com were nice enough to let me include one snow clip from their Compositors Toolkit. I got it from Compositors Toolkit 1. So that will be in the zip file with the associated files with this project. And uh, it's a lower res version. Their shots are at 2K resolution, but these guys turn out a pretty good toolkit. It's really good bang for your buck, so I would highly recommend it. And we want to thank them for allowing us to include one of those clips so you guys can follow along. So going to my quick times, the included file is called 015finparticles.move. And I'm just going to pull this in real quick, scale it down a little bit. And I'm just going to solo this layer so we can get an idea of what it does. So we have some debris, and I'm going to use this as snow, sort of beating out from the bottom, and then I guess some sort of wind blowing it to the left. And we're going to use this as the trail on our snow border. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate this a little bit. I'm going to scale it this way. And this just takes some doing, but we want to get it right behind the torso of our snowboarder. And you can see in Z, he's at zero. So if I move this slightly back, it's going to be behind our snowboarder. But we'll just leave it at zero for now. I'm going to screen this layer. And so we have this little snow trail. So at about seven seconds or so. Now this type of thing you just gotta fidget with. And I'm gonna move this anchor point over here so that when I rotate the angle, you know, I'm at least doing it from the origin. Then I'm also gonna add a new mask to this layer. Bring it in a little bit. And then I'm gonna feather that edge. By pressing F I get feather. So I have a nice soft edge. Oops. So now we just sort of need to look at where it needs to come in. Now, I don't think my snowboarder's really moved exactly where I want him to move. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust that. I'm going to move his torso farther here at the end. And have him start a little farther in at the beginning. So at the meat of the shot, you can see right here will be when we slow down around the seven or eight second mark. He's good and centered in the frame. So what I'm going to do is take this, these particles, and I'm actually not going to stack them underneath the torso. I'm going to go ahead and leave them on top of our snow border and see how they look. So for this, I'm going to lock all the other layers besides the particles, and 
they look okay falling off him, but I want that sense that he's sort of busting through it and that that snow's, you know, a little bit following him along the way with his momentum. So I'm going to find a good point here. I'm going to parent this to the torso. So now you can see you got that little bit of snow trail coming off. And I might even position, put some position keyframes in there to sort of keep it attached to him. Because the clip itself, you can see if we solo it, the snow's falling down. And sometimes, although you end up compositing by screening it, it's a little bit easier to just go normal with it. So you really get a sense of what it's doing until you're ready to actually finally render it out. So here he is. I think that I need to slide this clip a little bit so that it's already started some when he starts. It's actually, I'm going to go ahead and delete these keyframes all together. Slide this clip a little bit this way. And that looks like it'll be about right. Reintroduce the position keyframes. And toward the end, I'm just going to bring that up so it's still kind of following our snowboarder. Change this to screen. Now you can see we have little snow flurries and everything following our snowboarder. Now if you want to see these better, if we take off this in-between layer, the snow is going to stand out better. So whether or not we want that in-between layer, I'm not sure. But what I might just do is position this down a little bit so that we still get that layer, but we can still see the snow flurries coming off our snowboarder. And there we go. I mean, that's the basic idea of it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and render this out. And what I have done is I went ahead and added a vignette and a color treatment to this as well to sort of bring everything together. And I'm going to go ahead and render this out, and then I'll bring it back in and ramp it. It's kind of like on a cooking show where they pop it in the oven and it comes out automatic. So I'll see you guys in a second. Okay, so through the magic of... Motion pictures, we're back here with the final rendered clip. Now, I just want to say that you didn't this clip didn't necessarily have to be pre-rendered. It could have been, you know, pre-comped and done with that, but just did that to save us rendering time as I'm going through this on the tutorial. So what I'm going to do is time remap the beginning of this clip, I guess maybe to about the 9 second mark. I'm going to pinch them the time from the very beginning to the nine second mark. So I'm going to right click, choose time, enable time remapping. You can see I've got a keyframe for the beginning of my clip and a keyframe at the end of my clip. So the best way to do this is, like I said, about nine seconds looks pretty good because he's about dead center. So I'm going to take that keyframe. I'm going to drop a keyframe in at the nine second mark, excuse me. And the best way to do this to keep your time is you don't want to just pull this time remapped keyframe here because then what that's going to do is it's going to take this time between 9 seconds and 15 seconds and it's going to stretch it out and then it's going to squeeze this 1 second to 9 second. That's not what we want. We want everything from 9 seconds to 15 seconds to be exactly the same and the beginning part of the time to be pinched. So just grab both of those keyframes so that this range of time between these two frames does not change. I'm going to come back to the beginning and page up and page down if you didn't know is single frame advance. So I'm going to page down like five times, maybe six. Let's go crazy. And then I'm going to pull both of these keyframes here. And when you're dropping keyframes to get it to line up on your playhead, as you're pulling them, if you hold down shift, it's going to snap to your playhead, which is what I just did right there. Then I'm going to come to my last keyframe here. I'm going to press, oops, I'm going to press N to end my preview area there and we'll just preview that and what we have there is basic snowboarder slow motion with a ramp at the beginning so that's the essence of faking slow motion with a still image it could be done cooler it could be done better it could be done with all kinds of photos 
boxing. I mean, I can't imagine what sport you couldn't do this cool in. I really tried to do soccer or American football, but just could not find image to use with this, and I thought the snow was a neat addition anyways. So there's the basic deal, and as you can see, that little bit of motion that we have in the snowboarder with his arm and his leg and his torso tilting back, you know, this type of thing used briefly and in the right situations is a pretty good trick. So I hope you guys dug this tutorial, and I want to thank the Digital Juice guys for loaning us the clip to use for this. I encourage you to check out their Compositors Toolkits 1 and 2. They're really fairly priced, and I have found many, many a use for them, and I'll be using them in tutorials in the future. So that's it for this time, and I'll see you guys on my next tutorial, of which I have no idea what it's going to be yet, but I'll see you then. Bye.